Today is the day the Windsor family of Salim al Arati had been both anticipating and fearing. The Libyan-Canadian businessman has been acquitted of a charge of collecting donations without permission in a court in the United Arab Emirates. al Arati had been jailed by Emirati officials since August of 2014. He was in prison for 17 months before he was finally charged in January of this year with supporting terrorism, a claim his family and lawyers say was completely false. That charge was later changed to a lesser charge of collecting donations without permission, and it is on that charge that he was acquitted today. Paul Champ is an Ottawa human rights lawyer who's been retained by the family, and he joins us on the phone this morning. Hello there. Good morning, Tony. Tell me what happened today. Well, it's it's a great day for, for justice, uh, Tony. The uh, four men who were charged, uh, Canadian Salim al uh, two Americans and a, a French uh, resident, were all acquitted by the United Arab Emirates uh, Supreme Court. Uh, we all had been quite anxious. The hearing was supposed to commence uh, a few hours ago, but it uh, kept being delayed. Uh, but the men were finally uh, marched into the courtroom. Uh, it was uh, a closed courtroom with the exception of defense counsel, um, national or state media of the UAE, and uh, diplomatic officials from Canada and the U.S. Um, the judge uh, read out the verdict uh, for each of the four men. Uh, all four were acquitted. And um, so we've, we've got that news just as soon as they uh, came out of the courtroom, so it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Any reason for the acquittal? Uh, the judge just uh, 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 pardon me, uh, read out that, um, uh, that the evidence didn't meet the charge, so uh, we, we don't have a full report on the acquittal yet. But there is still some concern for us, Tony. We had been hopeful that... Uh, Salim al would have been able to walk out the courthouse doors uh, with an acquittal. We have a plan in place uh, that we had coordinated with Canadian embassy officials on the ground that they were going to assist him right from the courthouse uh, in uh, getting away and uh, uh, leaving the country as soon as possible. But unfortunately, um, he's been transported back to the prison uh, so we're, we're still trying to get details on that, both for, uh, from Canadian officials and the lawyers, because that, that's a bit of a surprise to us. So um, while it's a, it's a bit of a sub- celebration, we're, we're still a bit concerned, and we're trying to find out more um, about exactly when he will be uh, released. Now, I understand completely that much of this information is very, very fresh, even for you. Very fresh. Yeah. Do you know why he was taken back to the prison? We don't know, and that's what we're trying to uh, we're trying to get more from. Uh, I'm in communication with both his counsel uh, and his and uh, Canadian uh, diplomats, and uh, they're both trying to find out why. So uh, this is obviously a case involving the state security apparatus in uh, the United Arab Emirates, which is uh, like the secret police of the Emirates. And um, you know, over the last uh, couple of months, we had detected that there was a shift that. Uh, the court was not necessarily going along with everything that state security was asking it to do. And uh, now we think uh, state security might be a bit uh, upset with this verdict. So, you know, we we're asking the Canadian government to keep up the pressure because, you know, obviously we won't feel completely satisfied until uh, Ms. Salim is on a plane and out of the country. What, what's your greatest fear at this point? Well, that uh, state security is going to try to hold him on some other, uh, well, they don't even need a reason. Um, he was held, as, as you might recall, Tony, for 16 months without charge. Uh, the first three months he was held in secret detention. The, the government wouldn't even uh, acknowledge that they had him uh, in custody. Uh, that's, that's the time when he was tortured. So uh, we're still apprehensive, and, and we're looking forward to uh, you know, hearing that he's at the airport and about to get on a plane. Have you had an opportunity to speak to any members of his family? No, I haven't had a chance to speak with Marwa. This is very fresh. The uh, the verdict came in about uh, 40 minutes ago, uh, or even less than that. So they're obviously all conferring with each other. Um, the family is waiting in a few different locations. Um, the Salim's wife and five children are all in Qatar, uh, Doha, Qatar, which is uh, a country quite close to Abu Dhabi. 
uh, and the Emirates, and he has two brothers in uh, Istanbul and Turkey who are waiting. Um, if Salim is released, that's where he's going to go. He's going to go to Istanbul because there are uh, some of the best uh, doctors there. His health is quite poor, as you might uh, recall. So all the family right now is uh, just uh, speaking to each other about what the next steps might be. Now, you did say that Salim al Aradi is still in detention or still being held. Is that the case with the other men who were acquitted today as well? Yes, all four of them were taken back to the prison. So that's what uh, you know, all the different families were. I'll be in touch with their American lawyer shortly as well to see if he has uh, better updates than we do. We've been, we've been working closely with the Americans on this uh, case throughout. Uh, they, they've been engaging the U.S. State Department, and uh, we've obviously been working with Canadian Foreign Affairs, and it's, it's been quite a team effort to try to secure the freedom of these men. What has this entire experience uh, been like for you? Certainly the family has been virtually powerless through all of this. What's it been like for you to be involved in this and, and to watch it all unfold? Well, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, been quite a roller coaster, uh, Tony. I've, I've become, you know, pretty close to the family and um, as well as, frankly, quite close to Canadian diplomatic officials. I feel like I'm, I'm sort of part of, uh, you know, quite a big network that is, uh, you know, quite invested in, in uh, Salim's uh, release. Um, I know that Canadian diplomats who are seeing him every week have grown quite close to him. Um, they're, they are telling me that, you know, Salim is telling them that they'll always be his closest friends and family uh, because, you know, really they were his lifeline. Um, you know, over the past seven months, um, he hasn't been allowed any visits with the exception of Canadian diplomats. So, you know, they've been ferrying in messages in and out for us. Um, and I know, you know, seeing the courage of his daughter, Marwa, who's only uh, 18 years old, has been, you know, really amazing. And um, it's, uh, I mean, I feel uh, great this morning, quite elated uh, that we're, you know, that we were successful and he's going to, you know, he was acquitted. But uh, obviously we won't feel completely uh, comfortable until he's, uh, you know, safely reunited with his wife and his children. Good to talk to you this morning. Thank you so much for this. Uh, thank you so much, Tony. And I know that the family is deeply grateful of uh, you know the Windsor community. Um, after uh, Salim has uh, uh, completed uh, medical testing and so forth in Istanbul, he and his family will be returning to his uh, his home in uh, Windsor. Good to talk to you. Thanks again. Thanks, Tony. Paul Champ is an Ottawa human rights lawyer retained by the family of Salim al Aradi. This morning in a court in Abu Dhabi, al Aradi was acquitted of charges that he faced in the United Arab Emirates. And that verdict comes 21 months after he was arrested in a hotel room while the family was on vacation. His wife and four children moved to Windsor after that arrest. It's 729 on Windsor Morning.